Okay. Buckle up. We're going in. To understand the weapons room slash dojo fight in Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon between Shu Lien and Zhen Yu, we must first understand the driving force behind most of the events in the film, i.e. Zhen Yu, Teenage Mutant Ninja Chaos Engine. I'm sorry, that was a terrible joke, but they will not improve, you have been warned. The two main emotional plots running through Crouching Tiger are 1. Will Li Mu Bai and Shu Lien ever talk honestly about their feelings? And 2. Will Zhen ever make a non-chaotic life choice? Spoiler! No, no she will not. I'm Jill Bearup, I'm an actor combatant, which means I pretend to fight people on stage, I like to perform ridiculous experiments in my garden, and you are very welcome here. The plot? It goeth thusly. Li Mu Bai is a warrior monk type of fellow with a magic sword called the Green Destiny. He's in love with Shu Lian. He gives up his training and his sword because reasons only to have the sword immediately stolen by Zhen Yu, an aristocratic teenage girl who is also the apprentice of Jade Fox, the woman who killed Li Mu Bai's master. The movie is largely about one teenage girl's chaotic life choices and how they lead to really neat martial arts fights. And also there are dorks in love, but apparently happy endings are for suckers, let's not go there. And there are lots of fights, and in many of those fights they laugh at gravity. <laughs> gravity. Such is the nature of Usha, and Usha is how I'm going to be pronouncing it, because let's be real, uh, I'm going to be pronouncing a lot of words at least slightly wrong. I'm trying. I tend to like my entertainment more cheerful than Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, so it's not my favourite piece of media ever, but I really do like the fights, and I especially like how they integrate them so well into the story. Every fight has a purpose, and honestly most of those purposes relate to Jen and Jen's general lack of purpose and direction. Jade Fox wants Jen to become a criminal and run away with her. Jen's parents want her to get married to some dude. Lo wants her to be with him. Li Mu Bai wants her to train at Wudan. Shu Lian wants her to be content in her life? But Jen rejects all of these options because she is pure unadulterated chaos. And I think the key to understanding why she's like this is this scene where she talks to Jade Fox. When I realized I could exceed you, you can't imagine how miserably alone I was. With nobody to guide me, no master I could turn to. Yes, these clips are from the English dub. I had a little bit of trouble with the Blu-ray, don't at me. Jen needs guidance, and the lack of guidance she had when she, as a quite a young girl, started to outclass her teacher frightened her. But instead of seeking better teachers, she just turned inward, and that arrogance and unwillingness to trust anyone else that resulted has got a bit self-destructive. She hides her martial arts skills from her parents, she hides the extent of those martial arts skills from her teacher, she tries to reach out to Shu Lien, but things happen. To a certain extent she trusts Lo, but even that only happened after she beat him up and stabbed him. Look kid, I'm all for flirty fights, but might that have been an excessively violent, bloody way of beginning a relationship? I feel like it it might. Jen comes across as cold and as very, very arrogant, but that's not all there is to her, which is what makes her compelling. Now my favourite fight is the dojo fight. I was sent this fight as a clip a whole lot of times with the general comment, you must watch this, it's amazing, long before I ever actually watched the whole of Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, and I did watch it, but I had no context, and so I thought, well this is very well put together, but I'm not sure how I'm supposed to feel. Especially because my initial instinct was that maybe I should be on the side of the plucky teenager with the magic sword who is clearly outclassed. I should also point out that most of the clips stop before Jen gives Shu Lian the arm wound. But having watched the fight in isolation a couple of times, that wasn't the vibe I got from it, and I wasn't sure if I was reading it wrong or if I just didn't have the context. Spoiler, I needed the context. Without the context, the fight is technically and cinematically great, but there is very little emotional resonance because you don't really know who you're supposed to be rooting for. Jen has run away from her own wedding and then attracted a large amount of attention by beating up a significant number of dudes in a truly epic, non-lethal, but significantly property-damaging brawl. Shu Lian and Li Mu Bai have been trying to help Jen out by keeping her boyfriend Lo safe because he's been sneaking around the city looking for her, but when Shu Julianne tells Jen that they have kept Lo safe and he's at Wudan Mountain and suggests that maybe she should go back to her parents before making any unalterable life decisions, Jen freaks out. Someone telling her what to do? Someone making plans instead of just running around like a headless chicken? Jen ain't having that. You are working together. So I'll do what you want! The running theme, of course, being that Jen is absolutely implacably opposed to anyone telling her what to do ever. 
earlier in the film when he discovers her trying to return the sword, which is actually a very good idea, well done Jen, Lee Mu Bai offers her Wudan training, which she rejects. Wudan is a whorehouse! And now she's rejecting help from Shu Lian, who has never been anything but merciful to her, and Shu Lian, who has really kind of had enough by this point, finally loses her temper. How dare you accuse me of that, O Lee Mu Bai! I knew that you'd stolen the Green Destiny from the start! And what do I get but your childish disdain? Shu Lian demands the sword back, Jen refuses, Jen jumps down into a crowd of dudes, Jen starts to fight with these dudes who have, I think, Dao, Staff, Hook Swords, and I think that's called a Guan Dao. But it's definitely a pole with a sword blade on the end. Hooray for pole weapons! That was a, that was a callback to... Uh, never mind. Remember most of these because they are about to show up again. And then the formal fight begins. Yes, we're finally in the fight. Aren't you glad? Shu Lian is mad as heck and not gonna take this anymore. Jen is the personification of small but will fight you. Let's go. Note please that Shu Lian looks first to her opponent but then to the Green Destiny Sword. And Jen also looks first to her opponent but then to the Green Destiny Sword. I mean technically that's what we're fighting over here so it makes sense but also, you would be just a novice without it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Little smile, and then we have two moves of Shu Lian proving that she could just kill Jen if she wanted to. Because Jen falls for the faint, and then, oh, watch the face, before Shu Lian bats her away with the flat of the blade. The opening fight had a pursuit and escape dynamic rather than a duel dynamic, but they are, like in that opening fight, still unwilling to kill each other. In contrast to that night fight, though, there's no reason for Shu Lian to keep grinding Jen. She's not trying to stop her from getting away. Jen wants to fight. She wants to prove herself and prove that she doesn't need Shu Lian and doesn't need anyone's help, and that's not quite how it goes. So Shu Lian straight back on the attack and... Was that another feint or was that a missing sound effect? I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, this is the point where we get into it properly. We get a very long phrase which goes, Shu Lian on the offensive, driving Jen back, then Jen on the offensive, driving Shu Lian back, a more static section where Jen brings in her feet, and then Shu Lian divides her swords and drives the unfortunate teenager clear across the room, which culminates in her trapping Green Destiny between her blades. So note the mini arc within the context of the fight. Who's on the offensive should change, the width of the shot changes, the number of moves per shot changes. All of these things help to keep it moving, but also keep it reasonably clear. This section has a fair number of cuts, but we still average about five moves per shot or more, which is, you know, refreshing. And when Shu Lian divides her Dao, we get this extended shot from above, which is very long and very smooth. Remembering, of course, that one can speed up shots just a tiny bit to make them look even more smooth and flowing. Like, just a couple of percentage points makes a lot of difference. I don't know if they actually did or not, but it's a tool that is available. And there's a nice detail with the chipped scored edges of the Dao versus the Green Destiny, which looks old, but isn't so much as marked. This will be a recurring theme. Because then Jen does some fancy spinning, but not in a controlled way, and lands face down on the floor. But she's had enough of this, so after another short phrase, it's time for some wire work. And as we all know, wire work plus Green Destiny equals broken swords. That being said, Shu Lian doesn't lose her head for an instant, parries with the broken swords, and then kicks Jen out of the way to give herself some distance and time to grab another weapon. Which is a spear, and as I mentioned in my Size Does Matter video, I have a new and sneaking fondness for spears, so I'm always happy to see them. Note please how Shu Lian looks much calmer than Jen basically the whole way through. Jen isn't just angry, she's also afraid, but Shu Lian doesn't let her emotions influence her to that same extent. I mean, don't let your emotions show through is basically Shu Lian's entire gig, but the fights are, relatively speaking, an opportunity for the characters to cut loose and express themselves, and even in those situations she still maintains a fairly high degree of control. That is also true of Li Mu Bai, come to think of it. When we get into the Spear vs Jan fight, the pattern is very much the same. Shu Lian on the offensive, then Jen, then Shu Lian again. But obviously the way you fight with a spear is a little bit different. I love the movement. I love how much it wibbles around. Also, Shu Lian is really going for the head here, and Jen is forced to do a lot of ducking, which obviously from a cinematic perspective is great, because it looks very dynamic and dangerous. And while Jen is retreating, she's also basically forced to stay in quite close range, because otherwise she wouldn't have a hope of doing any counter-attacking. Gotta love that reach advantage. I guess in a movie where people literally fly through the air, I shouldn't be annoyed that a spear breaks a table like that, but I have questions about the reproducibility of this stunt. I'm just saying, I'm sure the spear is very sturdy, but that table looks sturdier. 
Anyway, once Jen finds her feet, the green destiny sword makes unsurprisingly short work of the wooden spear. And this phrase concludes with Jen throwing the spear point at Shulian. We'll come back there in a second. And then we're on to the hook swords. It's Jen who attacks first in this phrase, which helps to break the established pattern. You need to change up the dynamics, especially in such a long fight. But again, she can't really stand up to someone who is a master of just apparently all of these weapons. Look at this woman go. Shulian fights with one sword. Oh wait, but now it's two swords. She fights with a spear. She fights with hook swords which not only can trap the blade, but can also be turned into one giant swinging kind of chain weapon, and that would be terrifying. Hook swords are basically like 90% edges. Ah, that is just like one extra long spinny bladed nightmare. But once again, when Jen uses the green destiny to its fullest extent, oh, no more hook swords. Though we do get a callback when Shulian hurls the remainder of the hook swords at Jen, who has to do something fancy to get out of the way, as opposed to Shulian, who just dodged. And that's one of the two things we're hammering home in this fight, really. Jen is very talented, but she's also young and inexperienced and fancy to a degree that looks great on film, but is entirely unnecessary. And that's by design, because fancy martial arts look cool, but also fancy martial arts contrast really well with Shulian's calm practicality. I mean, no one is going to look at Shulian and go, oh yeah, that woman can't fight, but her style is very different. I mean, everyone in the movie has their own unique style. Li Mu Bai's, if you're wondering, is just that kind of very efficient, calm, float like a butterfly thing. Jen is flashy, sure, and she's impressive to watch, but I know where my sympathy is in this scene, and it's with Shulian, who is absolutely magnetic. You've got a magic sword that can break all weapons, all right, I'm just gonna keep trying things until I find something that works. And because I'm older and wiser and more experienced, I can do that. We also hammer home that they are angry and determined, but not lethally so. You can see this especially in the early part of the fight where Jen will wait while Shulian is getting herself a new weapon. Anyway, we have another pattern interrupt with the monk spade, which is a moment of pure comedy, which I very much appreciated. But there's another purpose for this moment too. Aha! You can see Jen thinking, she can't actually use every single weapon in here. She's not some invincible sword goddess. I can take her. It's at this point that Jen moves in to attack before Shulian is perfectly ready for her. Did the monk spade make her more confident, or is she just getting more desperate? The weapon Shulian grabs next is not exactly built for finesse. Bludgeoning weapons anyone. Makes sense, it'll last longer against the magic sword because it's so much thicker, and it's not a thin wooden stick like the spear is. It clearly worries Jen, and it smashes up a lot of furniture. And while it may be looking beaten up after some time fighting with it, you can also tell that Jen is getting tired. We have specific close-in shots of how her hands are shaking. These two have been wailing on each other for several minutes with no particular break. They're both looking pretty sweaty, as you would. So Jen fights back against the bludgeoning weapon using a whirly spinny attack that is quite similar to the one that Shulian used low these couple of minutes ago. And again, the green destiny shears through solid metal. Hey ho! It is at this point that we introduce another pattern break as Shulian decides to change tack and use her words. You would be just a novice without it. <laughs> Don't blame the weapon if you can't beat me. Jen, still arrogant, invites her to pick up whatever weapon she wants, and then the music gets real excited about everything as we get a glamour shot of Shulian's new sword. I think it's called a Daijan, but I really want to call it a broadsword because she's a Never mind, I told you the jokes weren't going to improve. The music starts to really get with it as we ramp up the intensity of the phrase. Everything is on the table in terms of targets. We get some close-in shots, we get attempted disarms, and then Green Destiny strikes again, but this time Shulian is prepared, and the sword blade is at Jen's neck, and it's over. From an honourable duel perspective, anyway. Again, note that Jen could be dead right now, but she isn't, and the fact that she isn't seems to kind of enrage her. There being no honour among spoiled brats, Jen then injures Shulian's arm and is about to mix it up with her again, but is stopped by Li Mu Bai. And then those two get into the bamboo forest, which is a scene I find both beautifully shot and kind of unintentionally comic sometimes. At least I assume it's unintentional. Anyway, so ends the scene, and it is excellent. In contrast to the first fight between Shulian and Jen, this one is very grounded. Sure, there's a little bit of wall running and acrobatics, but there's no need to keep Jen there. She wants to be there and fight, so there's no need for fancy footwork. This isn't a pursuit and escape situation, it's a prove yourself situation. And what it proves is that Jen is A, kind of a brat, B, not yet worthy of the sword, C, in desperate need of training, and D, 
kind of reluctant to hurt Shulian and very much unwilling to kill her. Shulian shows Jen mercy by holding the sword at her neck and not just cutting her throat. And Jen, even though she's dishonorably continuing the duel after it is clearly over, only cuts Shulian's arm. That could just as easily have been a stab or a cut to the head. Jen isn't meant to be an irredeemable baddie, and that is one of the reasons why Jen versus everybody in this entire bar is very much a non-lethal fight. We're supposed to feel sympathy for Jen, but if we're taking sides, it's clear that we're supposed to be on team dorks in love. The thing I want to underline in this scene, as someone who didn't watch Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon until relatively recently, is how important context and character are when you're talking about movie violence. As a scene by itself, it's cool, it's interesting, it's a lot of weapons in a short space of time, it's two women really going for it in a particular style that sometimes involves wire work but mostly keeps their feet on the ground. As a scene in context, it is clear that Shulian is desperately trying to beat some sense into Jen. And it's clear that Jen is talented but outmatched and would have been beaten a dozen times over if she weren't using the Green Destiny Sword. She fights to prove herself, but all she really proves is that Shulian could teach her a lot in all areas of her life if Jen was willing to let that happen. When you know the context, Shulian's patience and mercy and compassion are all very much on display, even as they have this hugely complex fight where they try very very hard to best each other. Without context, it's cool and it's funny, but with context there's something kind of tragic there, and they really underline that in the next fight when they get into the bamboo forest. Li Mubai beats Jen nearly effortlessly as a true student of Wudan versus someone who read a scroll once. But he freely offers her the knowledge that he has even after she has injured Chu Lien, which probably quite annoyed him, but Jen rejects it. For humour in this movie, you can't beat the unarmed brawl. If creative unarmed fights in mismatched styles are your thing, then the night fight is the one for you. If you like flirty fights, these ones are odd, but you know, pretty solid. But this one is my favourite because of the depth of the emotional content. It is two characters desperately seeking a connection which they almost get, but not quite. The fight solidifies the nature of their relationship as someone who wants to help and someone who refuses to be helped. The violence itself is their desperate attempts to communicate what they need from the other person, and it almost works. Don't you love it? 